As you can see, it's now morning. Uh, the day has dawned. And we are continuing our uh, 10 Principles of True Education training course, uh, talking about uh, what it means to teach. And using the skeletal system as our representative of teaching. There being two arms, uh, two uh, upper limbs, uh, representing health, teaching health, and uh, teaching. And we are going over uh, the three large bones in each arm. Uh, the three uh, is representative of order, and ten, there are um, actually thirty uh, bones in the arm, and uh, ten represents divine perfection. So, uh, 3 times 10, 3 order times 10 or divine perfection. So numbers uh, can uh, help us in a fast way remember what it is that we're trying to learn as well as to teach. All right. <clears throat> there were also, in paralleling the physical with the spiritual, there were three tribes on each side around the sanctuary. We need two arms and hands to do complete service. If we are missing one limb, and we can remove this limb here, this is the right arm, if we're missing one limb, we have a hard time doing everything. And it's just like um, we're told that the right arm of our message of the gospel is the health message. And if you remove the health message uh, from the gospel, then you can't do everything. So um, there are two parts of Christ's work as he ministered to the people. His work consisted of teaching and healing. Two is the number of division and support. This is how the two arms work separately and together. Christ first ministered to the sick, healing whole villages, and then he taught them the truth. He was a medical missionary. Physical healing is bound up with the gospel commission, spiritual healing. In the work of the gospel, teaching and healing are never to be separated. God often reaches hearts through the efforts made to relieve physical suffering. Now, this bone, let's reattach it here, this bone is called the humerus bone. The humerus bone is the teaching arm, or in the teaching arm, represents the principles and methods of Christ's teaching. In the Savior's parable teaching is an indication of what constitutes the true higher education. Divine wisdom and infinite grace were made plain by the things of God's creation. Through nature and the experiences of life, men were taught of God. And we're going to look at a scripture in God's word. And as we do that, let's pray and ask for his help in understanding these words. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given us your word, the promises in the Bible uh, in which you keep and you never lie. I pray that as we read these words that your Holy Spirit will come into our body temples and help us to understand. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to look at the book Romans, chapter 1, verse 20, and it reads, the invisible things of him since the creation of the world were perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity. What a scripture. I'll read it again. The invisible things of him since the creation of the world were perceived through the things that are made, 
even his everlasting power and divinity. What a master teacher he is. Christ might have opened to men the deepest truths of science. He might have unlocked the mysteries that have required many centuries of toil and study to penetrate. He might have made suggestions in scientific lines that would have afforded food for thought and stimulus for invention to the close of time. But he did not do this. He said nothing to gratify curiosity or to satisfy man's ambition by opening doors to worldly greatness. In all his teaching, Christ brought the mind of man in contact with the infinite mind. The mind of man into contact with the infinite mind. He did not direct the people to study man's theories about God his word, and his works. Or providences. Christ did not deal in abstract theories, but in that which is essential to the development of character and enlarge man's capacity for knowing God and increase his efficiency to do good. He spoke to men of those truths that relate to the conduct of life and that take hold upon eternity. There are two bones, the radius and the ulna. So we have the humerus and we have the radius and the ulna. Both are connected to the same bone, but having different functions. A spiritual application for this is that there are two branches of teaching, the ministry and the layman. Both use the same principles, but bearing different responsibilities. See how both the ulna and the radius are connected to the elbow. And the wrist right place here. And the wrist and how these connections provide the mobility for the hand. Both bones are needed to work together, or the limb would not be movable enough to be of much use. The ordained ministers alone are not equal to the task of warning the world. God is calling upon the layman to help finish the gospel. And we read from the Bible, Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The Savior's commission to go includes all believers in Christ to the end of time. It is a fatal mistake to suppose that the work of saving should depend alone on the ordained minister. All to whom the heavenly inspiration has converted are put in trust of the gospel. All who receive the life of Christ are ordained to work for the salvation of their fellow men. Then we have the carpals. There are eight carpals, carpal bones, in the wrist. Let's not, let's look at another spiritual application. God gave us eight ministries in teaching, in the teaching branch of service. 
we find this in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. 8. These gifts make the work complete and effective. All are joined together by love, but all distinctly doing their own job. Eight is the number in the teaching of the gospel. Excuse me. Eight is the number of superabundance and regeneration, which is the result of the gospel. There are five metacarpal bones. The spiritual application of five is the number of grace. These bones re represent the steps of redemption in the teaching of the gospel. The principles of the everlasting gospel from Genesis to Revelation are the same. I will go through those briefly and they go into more detail in the book, The Body Temple that you can get from teach services. One, repentance. And the text there you can read, Ezekiel 18.30. Two, confession. And the text is Proverbs 28.13. Three, conversion. The text, John 3.3. 3. Four, sanctification. John 18.17 and 19. And five, glorification, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Then in the teaching arm, we have uh, the palm of the hand. It's divided into eight carpals. We have two healing hands. Eight plus two equals ten, the number of completeness. These represent the simple remedies of nature that God has provided, and this would help us in understanding the right arm of the gospel, the health message. And I'll go through those once again briefly. Uh, one, nutrition. Two, exercise. Three, water. Four, sunshine. Five, trust in God. Six, pure air. Seven, rest. Eight, temperance, nine, benevolence, and ten, an attitude of gratitude. And that tenth one I want you to remember because as we get into...